Good morning, uh, good evening, uh, depending where you are. I'm uh, Massimo Introvigni, and this is the second uh, webinar of the today. Uh, we had uh, one in uh, Europe before uh, for the United Nations uh, uh, International Day for the truth on gross violation of human rights and the dignity of the victims. In the webinar we had in uh, Europe a few hours ago, I illustrating a painting by Annibale Carracci, uh, uh, Italian Baroque painter, and this painting launched the theme which became very popular. The idea that uh, truth, truth is the naked figure in the center, uh, has been kept in a well by uh, the bad, uh, uh, the villain is this lady dressed in green. She is now under the feet of the truth, but she was seated on the well. I'm not making this up. I know from which book uh, Carracci took the story. So lie or slander was seated on the well, but when the old man and the old man is time, time comes and frees truth from the well. And then you have the two characters on the side, which represents goodness, but we can say peace and love once truth has been freed. And as I said, this is a perfect metaphor of the story of uh, Taijmen, where the truth was really hidden at the end of the well, kept by slender, uh, personified by some Taiwanese bureaucrats in the end of the well. But then, with the passing of time, truth uh, is, uh, is now uh, coming out, and uh, it is time lifting uh, uh, truth out of the well, but it's also a lot of people who are cooperating in lifting the truth out of the well and telling this truth uh, uh, about uh, Taiji men to the world. So to accommodate uh, different time zones, uh, we have a second uh, webinar uh, now, and we will start this webinar by showing uh, a video, which is uh, quite interesting because uh, it's actually a project by a young girl, a ninth grader uh, member of Taiji Men, did it in the US with a friend for the National History Day. So it's how a young girl tries to introduce uh, uh, to uh, uh, schoolmates uh, her experience and the story of Taiji Men. So this is uh, the video, A Battle for Justice, and we will start our webinar with video. Amidst the first presidential election in December 1996, a prosecutor named To Kuang Yun accused a spiritual group, Tai Ji Min, of fraud and witchcraft. These heinous accusations led to the deprivation and limitations of their human rights and religious beliefs in Taiwan. Because of the failure at diplomatic resolutions, this event resulted in a political stalemate between the two parties. Ultimately, the failed attempt at diplomacy created a seemingly inscrutable encumbrance, instigating international debates regarding the Tai Ji Min case. Due to unjust violations within the Taiwanese government, international activists continue to take initiative in reforming the corruption that infringes human rights and the concept of freedom of religion or belief. Established in 1966 by Dr. Hong Daozi, Taijimen is a mempai derived from ancient Chinese qigong and martial arts. Dr. Hong has also promoted high-profile initiatives for love, conscience, and world peace, and in hopes of spreading good health and happiness. 
As a result of achieving numerous successes and helping over 10,000 people for more than five decades, Hajiman gained international recognition and received praise from all four Taiwanese presidents. As Taiwan's martial law was repealed in 1987, Taiwan was an advocate for religious freedom. However, authoritarianism became a hot debate amongst the nation. It continued to pose a hindrance to the democracy of Taiwan. After the first presidential election of 1996, religious minorities were targeted, shut down, and discriminated against due to their religious purge. Receiving threatening anonymous letters, Tajiman was caught in the crossfire of these religious purges. Since there is insufficient evidence, Tajiman was dismissed within one to two weeks by the Kaohsiung Naishinzu's prosecutor's office. As a result, the letters caused the prosecutor from Taipei's district attorney's office, Ho Kuai-ren, to relaunch the large-scale searches against this organization. Under Taiwan Criminal Code 245, the prosecutor or lead investigator must keep all information relevant to the case confidential. However, Ho brought media crews to broadcast the searches on 12 different academies and 7 houses of Taijiman members, violating Criminal Code 245. On Christmas Eve in 1996, there was no peace in my family. Even though no one accused my dad of any crime, he was detained and not allowed to communicate with others by the prosecutor for four months. Our house was searched. We were scared and didn't know when my dad would come home. Before retirement, my dad was the chief financial officer of a famous company with outstanding credit. However, because of prosecutor's illegal infestation, his credit was totally ruined because of negative and false re press reports. My mom, who worked in the Ministry of Justice, was under a lot of pressure and was forced to retire early. My sister and I went abroad to leave the heartbreaking place. She went to France, and I came to the United States. Years later, my dad received national compensation for unlawful imprisonment. But nothing could ever compensate for our pain and suffering from this incident. Seven years ago, my dad passed away with regret, unable to see the redress of the Taijima case. As Taijiman was being prosecuted, Ho sent letters to the county and city governments, including the Ministry of Interior, requesting the disbandment of Taijiman. In addition, he commanded the Public Works Bureau of Taipei to disconnect the group's water and electricity. Despite his failure to discover anything that proves his accusations true, Ho Chui picked certain information that diplomatically disparaged Taijiman's reputation as a spiritual organization into a harmful cult, causing national debates for questioning Taijiman's innocence. Additionally, Ho disregarded the illegality of double jeopardy written under the Criminal Code of Taiwan by accusing Taijiman of being a cram school and committing tax evasion. In 1997, Ho subpoenaed Shi Yuesheng, a tax officer devoid of any detailed knowledge of the investigation of Taijiman, to commit perjury. During the indictment, Ho used Shi's words as the only tangible evidence against the leader of Taijiman. <laughs> Despite his illicit investigations and having his accusations disproved, he was promoted to become the deputy of an anti-corruption organization for the government. On July 13, 2007, Taiwan Supreme Court acquitted Tai Chi Man on all charges of fraud and tax evasion. Innocent defendants were given national compensation. However, nothing could compensate for the time, effort, and anguish that the members have suffered through. Despite the Supreme Court's verdict on this case, the remaining tax fines from the National Tax Bureau, or NTB, still pose the problem. 82 bipartisan legislators signed a petition demanding the NTB to revoke the tax bills that violated the legal process. With the Congress's help, the representative of the Ministry of Finance agreed to repeal the tax bills in a public hearing. 
However, the government officials rescinded their promises and kept the tax bills. Eventually, the tax authorities corrected most of the tax bills to zero, except for the 1992 tax bill. 公听会后，财政部部长在九十九年七月二十二号用一个正式的签呈回复给田秋瑾委员，也给了涂醒哲办公室，然后在三十号也用函给周守训委员，均明白表示说，他们已经请中区国税局依照税捐基征法第四十条办理，他们愿意用税捐基征法第四十条撤回。I was lucky to be a messenger to help my Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters in the, the Tai Chi Man Shifu and Shimu at the beginning of the Tai Chi Man incident in 1996. I will never forget the first time I met a defense lawyer. He told me that I need to be very careful because the prosecutor uh, said in the media he is going to detain 200 more people. So every time I went to see the lawyer, I will put a lot of clothes in my car so that I can change them into at any time. And also, when I take notes, I use different kind of codes to avoid mentioning about my Tajiman brothers and sisters. The important message was conveyed in person to avoid being monitored. Tajiman is a very wonderful for me to improve my physical, mental, and spiritual health. And this incident is a barrier to allow Tai Chi Man to promote love and peace around the world. As Tai Chi Man sought to educate the public regarding societal injustice, they posted their contention on social media and protested on the streets of Taiwan in an attempt to gain awareness of the dire situation. Because it is excruciatingly late into the world that Tai Chi Man's core initiatives are being held captive by the corrupt government, there have been 25 webinars since July of 2020 with over 100 advocates calling for a diplomatic reformation of the violations of human rights against Tai Chi Men. Thus, the grave circumstances of Tai Chi Men magnetize international attention from everyone around the world. During the 2021 IRF summit, Tai Chi Men members participated and spoke to many politicians about this case, such as Katrina Lantos Sweat and Sam Brownback. Sweat is currently the president of the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice, and the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. And in Taiwan, the long-running attack against the Taiji men community by bureaucratic despots within the tax administration have led many religious freedom experts around the world con to condemn this form of administrative religious persecution. But what the government should do is to protect that right to peacefully practice your faith as you see fit. Taiwan's ambassador at large for religious freedom illustrates his support for Tai Chi Men's contentions. In violation of due process and the rules of evidence paired with his fallacious accusations, the attempted prosecution of Tai Chi Men, led by Ho, was unwarranted. This arduous journey for justice inflicted permanent burdens on Tai Chi Men members and created an atmosphere of animosity that endangered the diplomatic climate of Taiwan's democracy. As such, the value of truth, integrity, and justice cannot be appraised as Tai Chi Men members fought against injustice and corruption within their place of establishment for 25 years. The battle for justice has shed light on the chain of unethical corruption within the Taiwanese government and internationally inspired revolutions for injustice. By raising the origins of corruption and greed within the government, the democratic nation of Taiwan will thrive in its endeavors towards democracy and not authoritarianism. Hello, my name is Michelle Shen and I'm an 8th grader from Southern California. I created a documentary with my friend for National History Day about Tai Chi Men. My initial thought in making this documentary was to advocate for Tai Chi Men's rectification and to spread the word. I've wanted to work on this project ever since I was in 7th grade because I thought it would help Tai Chi Men if I participated and competed to spread the word on this case. I also wanted to share my take on this incident and how it impacted my life. My experiences in Tai Chi Men, as well as my family members, motivating me to work on this project has led to the creation of this documentary. I think the most unjust part is the unlawful imprisonment and detaining of the Tai Chi Men members and leaders. Because of the corrupt bonus system and the greed of, of a few unlawful officials, the 1992 tax bill was kept. This incident has caused detrimental damages on the Tai Chi Men members and leaders, 
as it led them to remember this moment for the rest of their lives. Because of this incident, this has prevented Dr. Hong and Taijun, other Taijun members to spread the Taijun culture and the message of love and peace around the world. I hope that this documentary could help people from around the world understand the Taijun case more and how this case is not only a tax case and that it is a human rights violation. This project has helped me understand Taijun more and how I can help them as a group. I hope international scholars around the world can use this documentary to help rectify the Taijun case. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, after this uh, delightful uh, video, I, I'm not sure uh, Stephen and Nada, who has participated in um, other webinars, and is a well-known uh, human rights activist uh, for Nigeria, Baptist pastor, and the president of the International Committee on Nigeria is with us. It was on a plane recently. But to be on the safer side, he sent a pre-recorded video, and so perhaps we can play his video. My name is Steven and I'm from International Committee on Nigeria ICON. I'm glad to be here today and it's my honor and privilege to be invited to this uh, August occasion while we are celebrating International Day for the right of the truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of victims. And specific to uh, human rights and the Thai Gimen case, and this is actually a special forum to discuss this. I'm concerned about what is happening in our world, but also when judgment is given and it's not respected in this area for the tidy men, then something is wrong. And that is why all of us in the global community advocating for the right of people, for those whose rights have been violated, we need to speak up and we need to act more effectively. This is very important and this is what we all stand to do. Having said that, I would like to see that we should engage specific organization institutions that will help us amplify our campaign, our advocacy regarding the case of the tidy men. I will suggest that we talk to the leadership of uh, IRF, International Religious Freedom Roundtable, which holds every week, every month in Washington, DC. So this is where we can advertise our issues. This is where we can, they can help us to amplify our voice every month. And they can even invite us to speak on these issues from time to time until everybody begins to speak about this. It's very important. And just like it is also that this year, there is going to be International Religious Freedom Summit holding from June 28th to 30th. And this is where everybody that is involved or most people that are involved in this course congregate in Washington DC to discuss about human rights violations and religious freedom for all. It is important that this issue should be raised at this summit because a lot of people will hear more about this case. A lot of people will speak about this. Many people will connect with this. This is very important for us because we begin to act strategically. We begin to engage and we begin to speak so that people will help us amplify this cause, even while we are not there. It's very, very important. And when we are talking about engaging policy makers also, it is also very important that we engage subcommittee on State Department and USAID management, international operations and bilateral international development. This is important. And the 
Senate Chairman on this committee is Senator Benjamin Cardin, who is very, very uh, upbeat to this task, at least to ask US government to act on behalf of people who are undermining religious rights of people like the Taiji Men case. And what this means is that there are going to be sanctions, there are going to be questions, so that the Taiwanese government will be able to do what is right. And they should respect the court that has actually exonerated the Taiji Men people. This is very important because if you don't do that, we'll just be speaking and no action will be taken. I think we continue to echo what the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, the truth is an empowering and healing force. We embrace it for the past, the present, and the future. But this truth must be heard and somebody must propagate it. And that is what we are propagating, I repeat. Propagating it means we propagate it effectively with the right people who can take action, taking action that can make the Taiwanese government to act and to act fast and quick so that we put this case of human rights violations of the Taiji men people behind us. We have a lot of issues confronting our world and we cannot gloze over the Taiji men case. Thank you. God bless. So we are thankful for the faithful and the continuous support of Dr. Nada, or if you prefer, Pastor Nada. And now our next speaker is Dr. Daniela Bovolenta, who works at Bitter Winter. And she will both talk about Bitter Winter support of Taiji Men and introduce a new initiative. Thank you, Massimo. Um, on December 4th, 2020, Bitter Winter published uh, its first article on the Taiji Men case, introducing the movie A Question of Justice, directed by Massimo Introvigne, and the side event at the third ministerial to advance religious freedom co-organized in Basav by the US Department of State and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Poland. Both the movie and the event were important steps in the international campaign advocating justice for Taiji men. And it is significant that our coverage of the case in bitter winter started from then. We have now published uh, 113 articles on the case in 50 months. Bitter Winter is a magazine devoted to human rights and religious freedom throughout the world. While we mostly cover cases of bloody persecution, killings and torture, we are also aware that religious discrimination has many facets. The Taiji Men case is of global importance and it is an almost stereotypical example of how tactics can be used to be discriminate against a spiritual minority and violate its human rights. It is for this reason that the campaign of bitter winter advocating for Taiji men will continue. Nothing and nobody will prevent us from speaking out for Taiji men. If somebody in, in Taiwan believed that, that fatigue would one day overcome us, and just because we kept advocating without achieving results, uh, we would cheese uh, our campaign, then I should tell you that somebody in Taiwan was uh, badly mistaken. Our voice uh, will not uh, be silent until uh, the voice of justice for Taiji men will finally resonate in Taiwan. Our voice uh, will continue to call for justice and to tell those who perpetuate injustice that they are as it, it is now fashionable to say, on the wrong side of history. Today, however, uh, when the United Nations celebrate the International Day for the Right to the Truth uh, concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of the victims, I am pleased to announce that we are ready to go one step ahead. 
In cooperation with our friends in Taiwan, today we launch a new website, taijimencase.org. Here is the new website. The new website uh, does, does not mean that Peter Winter, which has a global audience with multiple interests, will stop publishing about the Taiji Men case. On the contrary, we plan to continue our regular plan of publishing news about uh, webinars and seminars and about the presentation of the Taiji Men case in international scholarly conferences and uh, religious liberty events, as well as individual papers from these webinars and events. Taijimencase.org will work side by side with Peter Winter, another uh, publication covering the Taijimen case. It will not replace them, but it will offer those uh, interested in Taijimen case and those who should be interested in it, a collection easy to use of what uh, has been published uh, on the case in magazines, including Bitter Witter and scholarly journals, as well as videos of, of the events and other videos. Now, let me show a preview uh, version of the website. The final version will be online in a few days at the, at the, the URL taijimaincase.org. Netizen will first uh, find an outline here. Uh, an outline of the Taiji main case. In 10 minutes, uh, they will be equipped uh, to answer three crucial questions. Uh, what is a uh, Taiji main? What is the Taiji main case? And, uh, um, and why uh, do Taiji main these disciples uh, and their supporters uh, protest in Taiwan and internationally? From this outline, they will understand that, that is uh, in the uh, that in its basic features, the Taiji Men case is simple. A peaceful, a peaceful spiritual movement has been targeted by a political aggression, which started as a criminal case, and when the courts declared the criminal charges unfounded, continued as a tax case. It is very simple. As it happens in some wars, including the one we are currently witnessing, there is an aggressor and there is a, a party that has uh, been uh, aggressed. People of cautions uh, can only side with the aggressor. On the other hand, the weapons used uh, by the aggressor are complicated. They include uh, legal tools, administrative tools and slander. In a campaign of aggression, we are, as we are again tragically learning in these days, Slender is a dangerous weapon because it tries to reverse the truth. Through slender, the aggressor is presented as it was the aggressor, and the aggressor is presented as it was the aggressor. We should be totally clear here. Clear here. Taiji Men is the innocent aggressor party. The rogue bureaucrats are the aggressors. However, we should also deconstruct the tools the aggressor the aggressors use. Our main way of doing it is the new webs in the new website is a chronology. As you can see here. This chronology is not short, but it is very important. It explains exactly, and masks, the various attacks against the Taiji men, telling netizens who, when, and how perpetrated the injustice. I encourage you to read it carefully and to send the link to your friends. The chronology is something new, a powerful weapon of defense in the campaign for Taiji men. Then we plan to collect in taijimencase.org all the articles published in Bitter Winter, as you can see here in on, play, in on, in on page. Uh, 
And we hope in the future as well, as well on the enticement case. The welcome page will show the last addition to the website, but the article session will eventually become a large encyclopedic repository here. In addition to the magazine articles, there is a small but growing corpus of academic papers about Taiji Men. These are published in the section academic papers and can be downloaded. Another session documents presents the statements that our friends of the coordination Sorry, I can I will show you the page here. Uh, the session documents presents the statement that uh, our friends of the Coordination des Associations and the Particulier pour la Liberté de Conscience, a United Nations ECOSOC uh, accredited NGO, have presented at the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva and letters, scholars, and the association have written to the president of Taiwan. You will also see the videos and films in the session videos grow day by day. Here is the section. Finally, there is a contact form here at the bottom of the home page. And we plan to send to those interested a newsletter with updates on the Taiji Men case and the website. I do not believe that the website can change the world. It is not the website. It is the passion, enthusiasm, and commitment of those who believe that the idea of justice we are advocating for Taiji Men will prevail. Ultimately, it is the idea itself that may have powerful effects. The website is a tool in the service of the idea, although an important tool. As the French novelist Victor Hugo once said, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. The time for taijimencase.org has come. The time for the idea of conscience, truth and justice for Taiji men has come. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. And uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody, even in the uh, United States, uh, could enjoy this really encyclopedic uh, website, which will be online uh, as a matter of a uh, few days and will continue to add content and act as a repository to all what. Uh, human rights activists and scholars have said about Taiji Men. Now I'm pleased to pass to the next speaker, who is Professor Holly Falk, who teaches uh, religious studies uh, at Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. Hello. Um. Good afternoon or evening for you, good morning for me. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging the importance of Taiwan to the world and the topical nature of this conversation and this meeting. I visited Taiwan four times and I've come to love the country. Taiwan is a vibrant di democracy and its self-determination and autonomy need to be preserved. Taiwan is not perfect, and like other countries, it still has problems, although being able to criticize the government should be read as a sign of the nation's overall health. As in other places, conditions of bias can seep into political and legal decisions. The case of Taiji Men reverberates with an international pattern. When it comes to religious minorities, bureaucratic decisions are often arbitrary and courts often look the other way. The situation between Ukraine and Russia has made the world aware of the global stakes regarding Taiwanese security. The vulnerability of Taiwan has rightfully been compared to the vulnerability of the countries on Russia's border. The case of Taiji Men, however, invites a different comparison between Taiwan and Russia, where religious minorities face frequent harassment and persecution. 
like the Jehovah's Witnesses and other groups in Russia. In Taiwan, Taiji Men has endured selective prosecution for process crimes, including confiscation of, of property. Let me note too how the use of occult framing has created a presumption of guilt against Taiji men and other religions. Around the world right now, we are seeing a global trend toward illiberalism. Fundamental civil liberties are being questioned. Many countries have endured two years of time when the right to assemble has been severely curtailed. And in the United States, freedom of religion is sometimes being presented as merely code for hate speech. Despite the trendiness of the word intersectionality, most people do not understand how connected different causes can be, or that one of the common unifiers is unfair treatment by, by, un, by oppressive governments. In an American online magazine recently, the question was raised, why don't religious conservatives working for religious freedom support the cause of LGBT people? This, home, this hit home for me with some irony. I support both causes and believe, as they say in the United States, that it is possible to walk and chew gum at the same time. I did my work on religious freedom. I have consistently called attention to the shared interests of groups with different points of view. In Russia, China, and other countries where religion is restricted, the tactics applied almost applied against religious minorities are almost invariably also used against select secular political groups, especially environmentalists, human rights activists, and people working for LGBT emancipation. Religious freedom is imbricated with secular civil liberties. Regardless of an individual's personal faith, it is a cause that should concern us all. I hope the courts and government in Taiwan consider the implications of allowing arbitrary treatment to stand. Around the world right now, many people fear events are spinning out of control. Governments have a responsibility to their citizens to preserve civil society and equal justice under the law. Thank you very much for your attention and time. And uh, I hope we can continue with having uh, you and other representatives of the American Academia in these two webinars. Uh, we have one who is not able to join us, but has also pre-recorded the video and uh, is a pioneer of uh, studying uh, uh, the case of Taiji men in the United States uh, or uh, outside of Taiwan. He started well before me. And this professor, uh, Kenneth Jacobsen, who is professor of law at Temple University in Philadelphia, and he will speak to us through a pre recorded video. Good afternoon, or morning, wherever it happens to be. I am sorry I'm not able to be with you in person. Uh, my teaching and faculty responsibilities at Temple Law School have uh, prevented me from uh, participating live, but I am honored that I've been asked to submit this video uh, and appreciate uh, that offer. And I also certainly want to uh, appreciate and express my appreciation to the uh, other panelists uh, in this webinar, uh, outstanding individuals, highly credentialed individuals that have uh, a lot to say and a lot of wisdom uh, to share to those that are looking at this uh, video. So the International Day for the Right to the Truth Concerning Gross Human Rights Violations and for the Dignity of Victims. That is the day that we are celebrating, commemorating, and discussing today that UN designation. But we can ask ourselves, what is the truth? What is the truth? Since this day asks the, the right to the truth, what is the truth? What does that mean? The truth means that we have complete honesty and transparency and openness about the events that occurred. The truth means that we know who participated in those events. And the truth also means that we understand why they did what they did. What were the reasons for their conduct? And this makes the, this particular day and its application at Tai Chi Minh uh, somewhat unique because 
In a way, we know the truth. We know the truth about what happened. It's contained in hundreds of thousands of pages, of files, of petitions, of court documents, of court decisions, of appeals, of jur in journals, and even webinars like this one. The facts, the truth, really are known. But as the UN Commission on Human Rights expressly stated in its 2006 report, recognizing this day, the truth includes something else. And that is there must be the guarantee of effective remedies and remediations for these violations that are exposed from the truth. There has to be accountability. There has to be remedies available. And this is what has not happened in the Taijiman case. And this is the part of the truth for this day that the government of Taiwan has failed in its responsibilities to Tai Chi Min, to its DZ, and to Dr. Huang. But I also want to focus on the second part of the title of this proclamation of this day. And that is that it's the International Day to also recognize the dignity of the victims, the dignity of the victims. So what does that mean? That we pay tribute to those who have fought for human rights and religious freedom. That we honor those who have persevered in the face of tyranny and oppression. And that is what Tai Chi Minh and Dr. Hong have done in the face of unrelenting decades long persecution. They have persevered and they will continue to persevere until justice is finally achieved. I have fought on behalf of Tai Chi Minh for seven years. I'm not going to give up. I'm not a quitter. It's not in my DNA. I've also fought for justice and for the rule of law my entire professional career. Right now, I'm working on a case involving human trafficking, immigrants who came to our country seeking asylum, who were put in jail and were forced by private contractors to our government that run those jails, that operate those jails, ICE, were forced to work for a dollar a day, sometimes for years while they were waiting for their hearings. A complete injustice, and I'm fighting on their behalf with others around the country. So I do not shy away from the good fights. In fact, I embrace them because when you're fighting for principle and when you're fighting for what's right, then that is something that can allow you to get up every morning and put your head down on bed at night and feel good about what you've accomplished. So to conclude, I again, I wanna thank uh, the uh, participants in this webinar. It's an amazing list of uh, wonderful speakers. I regret that I can't uh, be there again. I look forward to seeing it uh, once it's uh, available online so I could watch all of the comments of some of my good friends that are on this panel and uh, some others that I don't know, know that well. But what I can say is that this day has, I think, particular meaning and importance for Tai Chi Minh and for the fight and the battle in which we are all engaged on its behalf, and we will not quit until we are, have prevailed. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely, we will not quit.
And uh, now for the second part of the webinar featuring uh, testimonies from uh, Taiji Men uh, DZ and more videos, I will uh, uh, pass the torch to Willy Fautre, who is a co-organizer of this webinar as co-founder and director of Human Rights Without Frontiers. Willie, you should unmute yourself. I forgot about it. <laughs> yes, thank you for passing me on the, the torch or the baton, as I could also say, for the race to the second uh, session that is uh, usually devoted to uh, testimonials of uh, uh, members of the movement, so the, the disease. And these contributions uh, are always uh, very important, uh, as we have seen in former webinars, because they are voices of insiders, while we are outsiders. They are voices of those who bear, share, and communicate the, 25, the burden of the 25 years of suffering of uh, Taiji Ben. And before giving the floor to uh, those uh, dizzy, I think that uh, we will also share with our <clears throat> viewers here a second video uh, mm -hmm. titled Unbreakable Bonds. Unbreakable Bonds, Episode 2. The Academy Without Shirfu and His Wife was bleak and desolate. A sister who used to be cheerful had a worried look on her face. Hey, brothers and sisters, I've packed my bag. If I was taken into custody, please hire a lawyer for me. Yet, she was also fearless. On hearing this, a brother became emotional shouting. Don't be afraid. We are innocent. Because of prosecutor Ho's intimidation, Tai Ji men dizzy who are kind-hearted people felt insecure. Making intimidating remarks via the media was Prosecutor Ho's scheme to dissolve the academies. Although the dizzy were afraid of being caught and detained they did not hide. They just packed their bags, handed their bank books and pin numbers to their children, and took turns guarding the academies. Since all assets of Shifu and his wife had been frozen, the 12 academies were confronted with financial difficulties simultaneously. The Dizzy contributed money or time to keep the academies up and running. The Dizzy wove one lotus heart after another with red threads. Each one was tied with a yellow ribbon. A total of 16,666 lotus hearts were made with each representing how much the Dizzy missed their Shifu and his wife, and how much they worried about them. The lotus hearts connected all the Dizzy's hearts to defend Tai Ji men together. Aware of the possible danger and fearful, the Dizzy still insisted on doing the right thing. This is true bravery for love. The four months, following the beginning of the investigation, were like an endless nightmare for the Dizzy. Numerous and negative news headlines about Tai G men were falsely reported day after day. During the four-month investigation, over 400 news reports were published. Where on earth did the one-sided negative news come from? Every single piece of the fake news shocked the Dizzy. Tai Ji Men, a place full of laughter, turned into a group allegedly involved in fraud overnight. Prosecutor Ho, who had been quite popular with the media, made another move by openly calling for 
the establishment of a self-help association. Register ASAP to protect your rights. He took advantage of human weaknesses and used money as an inducement. Some Dizzy's names were put on the victim list by their relatives or friends without their permission. Some couldn't resist the temptation of greed in their hearts and wrote the names of their deceased relatives or friends or fake identities in the self-help association's questionnaires. The self-help association fabricated by prosecutor Ho ruined many families. Afterwards, the judge found in court that the association was bogus and confirmed. There was no victim at all. How come there existed the self-help association? Prosecutor Ho shot arrows before drawing the target. His false accusations had never been justified. He then targeted Chen, a senior dizzy. When Chen was taken to the investigation bureau for questioning, he saw his wife, who was working at the Ministry of Justice at that time, being locked in another detention room. As soon as Chen entered the interrogation room, Prosecutor Ho shut down the audio recording. Did you see your wife? Then answer wisely. Your Shurfu's Kung Fu isn't real, right? It is real. My Shurfu's Kung Fu is real. Chen answered truthfully. Doesn't it matter if your wife's salary is halved and your two daughters have nothing to eat? Prosecutor Ho asked. Chen looked at the prosecutor, who's leveraging the safety of his wife and children to force him to make false accusations, made him very sad and mad. Thinking of his Shifu's teachings and his own experience at Tai Ji Men, Chen tried to stay calm and replied again. Shifu's Kung Fu is real. The result of his telling the truth, however, was that his detention was extended by two months. Chen's wife was smeared, being depicted as an official of the Ministry of Justice involved in the case, and she was forced to retire early. Prosecutor Ho was associated with a temple in southern Taiwan. He included an outrageous accusation in his indictment. I would include the accusation of raising goblins to defraud people. Tai Ji Men Dizzy were at a loss. What is a goblin? The absurd accusation became a hot topic in the media, in favor of gossip and sensationalized news. Suddenly Tai Ji Men was depicted as an evil religious organization. The prosecutor's office and the academy were crowded with the media. TV stations scrambled to report negative news about Tai Ji Men. The dizzy were under even greater pressure. Some Tai Ji men Dizzy's wedding engagements were broken off. Get out! Some Dizzy were turned away by their relatives. Some Dizzy were transferred at work. Why don't you just quit? Some Dizzy were isolated at work. Don't talk to him. Many younger Tai Ji men Dizzy were bullied and couldn't go to school. Freak! The Dizzy were heartbroken. Their pain was beyond words can't express the pain in my heart. There is no way to tell the suffering of the heart. Dear viewer, you could never imagine that, under Taiwan's so-called democracy, Tai Ji Men, a law-abiding group that promotes physical and mental health of world citizens, as well as preserves education and culture of conscience. Such an excellent group that each Taiwanese president pay tribute to. Merely a prosecutor can illegally persecute them. This is really a catastrophe for Taiwan and its people. Next, what more outrageous illegal acts will prosecutor Ho Quanren have? Please continue to watch the third episode of Unbreakable Bonds.
thank you for that very informative uh, video that shows us how just one man, the prosecutor who uh, created that machinery and put it in place just to spread lies about Taiji Man and to stigmatize the, the movement and uh, create uh, some sort of uh, uh, mistrust inside the movement. But finally, he didn't manage to destroy uh, Taiji Man. And the first um, dizzy that I will introduce is uh, Mrs. Uh, Alan Shi, who is operation manager. Uh, Mr., sorry. Uh, hi, uh, professors, scholars, old friends who joined today, greetings. Today is the United Nations the International Day for the Right to the Truth. The Secretary General of the United States, Antonia Guterres, described it the best. The truth is an empowering and healing force. We embrace it for the past, the present, and the future. Therefore, in order to return the justice to the victims of human rights uh, uh, persecution, the best way is to investigate the truth clearly, make it public, and let the, and, and let the perpetrators receive the punishment they deserve. The implementation of uh, transitional justice that the Taiwanese President Tsai promised during her re-election campaign has yet to see the desired results because there are still many injustice cases after 1991. And it is necessary to restore the truth and return justice through transitional justice. Take the example of the over 25 years Tai Chi Man tax case. Even though the Supreme Court de declared Tai Chi Man not guilty of tax evasion or any other charges, Control Yuan had already investigated and concluded Prosecutor Ho Kwan Lung committed a man and the evidence contradicted each other. The prosecutors bring in the public pros uh, prosecution clearly broke the rule of the evidence. Therefore, the indictment is invalid and cannot be accepted, but issue tax bills based on the wrong indictment. The Control Yuan also found the National Tax Section Bureau had seven major violations. Former Control Yuan members, Qian Ling Huiyin said, quote, I indicted seven points for rectification with each, the National Tax Section Bureau simply said, ah, we make a mistake in 2011. She told to the finance minister that this case should be closed, but he didn't attempt to resolve the matter the way he would with his own business. After, after all, he already got his bonus and the tax is imposed on someone else anyway. And the court. Even, even more, the National Taxation Bureau was with the administrative enforcement agency together, auction of Taiji Man's real estate properties according to the falsified bill on August 21st, 2020. Another tax victim example a traffic fine was overdue by Chen Xinxu from Kilong. His house was illegally auctioned without sending any notice to him. After the illegal auction was exposed, the administrative enforcement agents even held a press conferences to argue that they did it according to the law. However, it was revealed by the media later that the photo of the notification presented as a proof for the argument by the administrative enforcement agency was backdated. These perpetrators has not been punished due to their wrongdoing, which shows that the corruption still existed in the Taiwanese government. 
is this the transitional justice that President Chai was talking about? Or is Taiwan returning to the days of martial law? I, want, I am a Taiwanese immigrant in the USA and also a Taijiman Deeds. I enjoy traveling with my master, Dr. Hong, to promote world love and peace by cultural exchange and promotions around the world. I remember that 2000, the first year when I came to the United States for graduate study, Tai Chi Men Friendship and Goodwill Group was invited by Senator Mr. Jesse Hell, Chairman of the United States Senator Foreign Relationships Committee to conduct the cultural performances in Capitol Hill. Mayor of Washington District, of Columbia, Mr. Antonio Williams officially declared March 22, 2000 as Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day and praised Tai Chi Man as international peace and goodwill ambassador. Affirming the efforts made by Tai Chi Man for cultural preservation for addition booklet for the trip. And I share with my professor, he liked it very much and asked to keep it as a souvenir of Dr. Hong. We have already visited 1,001 countries in the world and participated in more than 3,000 cultural exchange activities which has been praised and recognized by many people all around the world. For example, the mayor of Honolulu declared September 19, 2001 as a Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day and Dr. Hong Dao's Day. And the city of Berkeley declared August 5, 2005 as a Federation of World Peace and Love Day. Can you imagine? Such a group has been treated unfairly by the Taiwanese government. Even after the courts has ruled we are innocent, have no tax owed, no tax evasion, and the control yuan found that the prosecutor actually committed a major violations and the National Tax Action Bureau committed seven major violations. We are still illegally taxed by 25 years and illegally auction of the property which will be built for the academy. Former legislators Luo Sule once said, quote, if the Tai Chi Men case is not resolved, there will be no justice in Taiwan, end quote. In fact, Taiwan's human rights protection system has gotten worse. On March 21st, three days ago, the law firm of famous human rights lawyer Zhang Jin was searched by police with armed forces simply because it violated the personal identity information law. On September 19, 2020, a Tai Chi Mendes and volunteers was arrested by police on the street and later detained in a police station overnight just because she was holding a poster. The prosecutors who handle these two incidents are exactly the same as the pros prosecutor Ho Kuan Lun held a high profile search at the Tai Chi Man by police with armed forces 25 years ago. Taiwan is not improved. Professor Wu Jinqing made the following statement at the March 22nd press conference, quote, Conducting a search for a, for a misdemeanor case is a serious violation of principle of proper, proper, sorry, is a, a violation of the principle of proportionality concerning such a minor offense, which cannot be prosecuted without a complaint by the victim. It is unbelievable an army of police were dispatched to search the law firm of Attorney Zhang who had voiced discontent with the ruling party. 
if such an incident is tolerated and accepted as a president, it will not only cause great harm to lawyers, but also seriously erode the core of attorneys' rights to defend their clients. In the process of becoming a more democratic country, ruled by law, Taiwan should have not only criminal justice, but also substantive justice, end quote. Therefore, on this International Day for the Right to the Truth, I sincerely appeal to President Chai to truly hear the voice of the people, to truly realize what you promised do, during your election campaign to achieve truly transitional justice, justice in Taiwan, to rectify fabricated cases, to punish those perpetrators, and to protect human rights so that people may truly live and work peacefully, joyfully, and harmoniously harmoniously in Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan Shi, for reminding us, among many other things, that the implementation of a transitional justice that the Taiwanese President Tsai had promised during her re-election campaign has not been followed by any concrete steps. And to uh, launch again that call for justice uh, for Taiji men uh, people, for their voices uh, to be heard. And now I will uh, give the, the floor to Howard Kuan, uh, whose presentation is titled A Little More of Care, A Little More of Protection to Your Rights. Howard, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you, Billy. Hello, everyone. My name is Howard, and I'm a Taijiman Eat. And as my honor to share my viewpoints here. And I think as universal, it's universal, whether it's education and schools or social morality norms, people must respect each other and other concepts aren't prevalent in our daily lives. This is the most fundamental human right. If you violate the human rights of others, will be, you will be seen through the eyes of others. This type of behavior will be scrutinized by society, social norms, or our own conscience. These moral standards help to regulate the parts that the law cannot but what about when we are bystanders? Many movies and series have also discussed related issues. In fact, standing on the sidelines and ignoring the occurrence of wrong behavior also encourages people who engage in wrong behavior to believe that they can continue to behave arbitrarily. Because the government compiles tax incentives and administrative except executive bonuses in Taiwan now. Some officials will unscrupulously issue tax bills to the people and ask them to pay a small amount in order to achieve performance and gain money. You may believe that because the government is in such disarray, the people should have long ago protested to the government in order to fight for their rights. True, some volunteers took to the streets and Kailagala Avenue to express their displeasure. However, many people are unaware that they are victims or that the current situation in Taiwan is occurring and they have become indifferent and cold eyed bystanders. Encouraging the illegal officials to continue to prosecute the affected households. Although people may think that the victims who are on news or on the internet are pitiful, they may just wish to assert that there are only a few cases and that the same situation won't be reduced to them. Is that correct? 
I will stand out and speak in support of a tax problem. Primarily because I want our current and future lives to be better. Taxes and inextricably linked to our lives. I am willing to continue speaking out. And there are many youths who have the same viewpoints as me. That's why we continue to participate in various tax protests. And there are also many older volunteers for the future of the next generation, regardless of wind or rain, also participate in tax protests. All of our volunteers express our wishes and demands in a peaceful and rational manner. We only hope that the officials will follow the law and that the tax system will be improved. However, it was the officials' indifference that was exchanged. From 1.9 million new cases of tax arrays in Taiwan in 2001 to 14.31 million new cases in 2021, the number has increased 7.53 fold in the last 20 years. These figures not only reflect the government's regret for errors, but also the fear and anxiety that more than half of Taiwanese populations is experiencing. After all, those who deliberately fail to pay their taxes are in the minority. The state should not control the collection of taxes for people who are in financial difficulty and are unable to pay them. Auctioning people's home and preventing them from leaving the country are all examples of state violence that violates people's fundamental right to subsistence. According to Huang Junjie, a professor at Dongzhen University, it's as, as, as if more than half of us are illegal immigrants. Many experts and scholars believe that there are many unjust false and wrongful convictions here, and that a family has been ruined as a result. Isn't it true that the constitution guarantees the right of the people to liberty, property rights, and the right to immigrate freely? Isn't it unconstitutional to prevent ordinary citizens from leaving the country and to detain them from, for no apparent reason? The world's massive devastation is incalculable and irreversible. However, in today's Taiwan, there are tax bombs on par with the Russia Ukraine conflict, which continues to threaten the people. Mr. Zong, a brilliant young man, is a scientific and technological genius. He received numerous awards prior to guarantee, and he is also a tax evader. In 2008, he founded a software design firm in Taipei. He received several awards, but received no monetary compensation. The company's operating results were still below expectation, so he shut it down in 2013. Surprisingly, the tax bureau claimed that they failed to fill a tax return in 2012, and they received a tax bill of 46 million NT in 2014. It's it is possible that the company didn't receive the tax bill previously, and when it was sent back in 2014, a total of 54 million in fines was added. The executive office froze all accounts. The issue is that their company doesn't guarantee, doesn't generate that much revenue. Everything is a figment of the taxman's image. In Janation, Mr. Zong complained that without this income, he cannot claim that he owes a tax. 
And then the test is based on the fact that he didn't deny it, rather than actual evidence. It is impossible to claim that he confirmed the attack solely because he failed to provide relief overseas. Mr. Zhong hold no idea that Taiwan, a free democratic and human rights country, would restrict him from leaving the country due to a wrong tax bill that he couldn't return home for nine years. And the Tai Chi Man case is, and the Tai Chi Man case is the most well-known case in Taiwan. The Tai Chi Man case was brought about by Prosecutor Ho Kuan Yuan abusing his prosecutorial authority. Following that, the tax bureau ignored the court's decision and issued tax bills. It has not been resolved after more than 25 years. Experts and scholars believe it is a case of human rights persecution known as 228 incident. In addition to the persecution of the case itself and the reports of the newspapers and media last year, there were many people and families involved in this case, and they were not only affected by the case, but they were also victims of it because of the bullying and discrimination. The scars left by these victims in this case will not disappear. However, the wrongful officials have been promoted one after the other with no punishment. What was taught in the family, society, and even the law is entirely different. Of course, this is not the only case. Any disaster stricken households have suffered the same injury. I hope that illegal officials examine their conscience and let all Taiwanese people understand the taxes and problems that Taiwan is currently facing. There are many victims who are prosecuted as a result of taxes and issues, and we should all be aware of this. The human rights violated by the victims to know the truth that should be known in this case to protect the dignity of these victims and to make Taiwan truly a country with a sound tax system. Today is right to do state. I hope that everyone can use the state to double check themselves to, to see if there are bystanders who don't know the truth or prosecutors who prosecute the people. Punishment is necessary because otherwise we will repeatedly abuse public power to prosecute the people. The people, the people will always be at a disadvantage and peace will never be achieved. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Howard, uh, for focusing on and denouncing the inflation of artificial uh, and fabricated cases of alleged tax uh, evasion uh, cases in Taiwan. Uh, this shows that the problem of Taiji Man is much broader. Uh, it is systemic. And this systemic problem is worsening year after year. And it is uh, urgent uh, to, to put an end to it. Indeed, you you recalled some uh, statistics saying that uh, from 1.9 million new cases, uh, new tax cases in Taiwan in 2001 to 14 million new cases in 2021, the number had increased by 7.5 fold in the last uh, 20 years. So this is a serious social problem for Taiwan that needs to be solved as soon as possible. Otherwise, it will be out of control. Thank you for focusing on these uh, uh, points. And I will now uh, give the floor to uh, Sandy Lin, uh, who is accounting uh, specialist. Thank you, Willie. Hello, everyone. My name is Sandy. This is my great honor to participate today's forum on the International Day of the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of victims. I am a Dizi of Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy, Los Angeles. I've been practicing Qigong for 25 years. 
my parents, my siblings, and my two sons. All three generations of my family are Tai Chi Man Dizi. My family and I moved to the United States when I was 18. I'm the middle child in my family. Since I was a child, I have low self-esteem. I'm an introvert and was afraid of being in front of crowd. Before we immigrate to the United States, my parents took me to join Tai Chi Man. Under my master, Dr. Hong's teaching, I learned to be calm, relaxed through practice Qigong. My mental and physical health has improved. In addition, I learned to be open-minded while sharing my opinions with others to accept myself and to be brave when dealing with the difficulties in life. When I faced with challenges, my master told me to think positively. I see every challenge as an opportunity to help myself grow with difficulty problems. And then when I deal with difficult problems, I, um, after becoming a mother, I face challenges in parenting every day. However, through practice Qigong, I'm able to remain calm and listen to my children. I've learned to respect my children and guide them with conscience so that they know what is right and what is wrong and learn to take care of themselves in this ever-changing world. Recently, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine have been covered on the news every day. I admire the courage that people of Ukraine are defending their country and fighting for democracy and freedom. The world's casualties, the terror and the worry it has produced are truly horrific. I sincerely hope that the war will end soon. World peace is something that everyone wishes for now. When the bill of world peace and love traveled to five continents and leaders of various countries rang the bell, they made their wishes for peace. And that peace was spread to every corner of the world. I hope that the Bill of Peace will play a key role in turning the world around and changing the world. I'm grateful for the chance to participate in some of these important events to promote love and peace. Dr. Holm has taught us to believe in ourselves and don't underestimate our ability to transform the world. I'll never forget the first time I joined my Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters to attend the United Nations DPI NGO conference in 2008 in Paris. I gave a speech in a conference to share my experience of working with Dr. Hong to promote love and peace. Despite the fact that the meeting was held in French, I was eager to convey the message of love and peace with everyone there. And I received a round of applause. My perspective on life has changed after peace journey to the United Nations. I become more open-minded and courageous. I'm grateful for this opportunity to grow myself and also make the world a better place. This wonderful life experience makes my life more meaningful. I'm so honored to be a Tai Chi Man Dizi. However, you will not believe that such a great organization, which has been de dedicated themselves to worldwide cultural exchanges, promoted the ideas of love, peace, and conscience, and receiving recognition from government officials in US and the important leaders from over the world has been subjected to human rights violations and a fabricated taxation case for 26 years. Prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren used a fake indictment to convict Tai Chi Man and then send the information to the National Tax Bureau to build Tai Chi Man for taxes. Despite the fact that the Supreme Court ruled on, on July 13, 2007, that Tai Chi Man was innocent and owed no tax, the NTB did not revoke the taxation punishment as required by law. 
Instead, the NTB and the executive office auctioned Tai Chi Man's sacred land in August 2020, violating Tai Chi Man master and disciples' freedom of religious belief and human rights. How could this happen in a country that claims to follow the rule of law and is governed by a democracy? As a Taiwanese American, it is very upsetting to see the Taiwanese government abuse this lovely group. Last year, we visited Washington DC for four times. In July, we participate in International Religious Freedom Summit and met many international religious scholars there. Many people could not believe that persecution of religion or beliefs would have happened in Taiwan. Scholars from all over the world spoke for us, urging President Tsai to stand up to help solve the Tai Chi Man case. In addition, Tai Chi Man disciples from all over the United States also wrote to their senators and their representatives, hoping that they would pay attention to such persecutions in Taiwan. I went to DC again in early December last year. It was a great honor to have the opportunity to meet with Congresswoman Yang Kim. I was touched to see her taking time out of her busy schedule to meet with us. The Congresswoman has always been concerned about human rights issues. She was willing to listen to our voices, willing to offer help. And she recognized the efforts and the involvement that Tajima has brought to local communities and encouraged us to continue to do the right thing to reach our goals. She also assured us she would try her best to express her concern about our case. What I saw is the sincerity of a Congresswoman whose willingness to help the people solve their problems. Thus, a government that is willing to listen to the voice of the people. Only by knowing the truth can a government bring hope to the people. On the contrary, we visited the Taipei Economic, Culture, and Representative Office in the United States, take role, four times last year, with the hope of meeting the Taiwanese Deputy Representative to the United States. But she was always too busy to meet us. We even waited outside take role for a long time being unable to meet face to face as an overseas Taiwanese, I feel very disappointed at the scene. I saw members of the House of Representatives and the international experts and scholars take human rights issues seriously. However, Taiwan is a democratic country with freedom and rule of law but the government ignoring attitude toward the people is a serious violation of the international convenience on the civil and the political rights and the international convenience on economic, social, and the cultural rights. They have not even fulfilled the protection of human rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I think that the Tajiman case is not only a case of persecution of religious belief, but also the persecution of human rights. For more than 25 years, the Taiwanese government has seriously mistreated Tajiman. It is state violence for the Taiwanese government to remain silent and not return justice to Tajiman. The fact that the Taiwanese government is unwilling to admit its wrongdoing makes me worry about the future development of democracy in Taiwan. The government has bravely infringed human rights, serious harming people's well-being, especially now the world is in turmoil 
and Taiwan is wary about becoming the next Ukraine. I would like to call on the Taiwanese government to put the people first, to publicize the truth, to hold officials accountable for breaking laws, to fulfill the government responsibility with conscience, to return Taijiman's sacred land, to maintain the dignity of Taijiman masters and disciples so that the disciple can practice with peace of mind and then the people in Taiwan can feel safe. Thus, Taiwan will have a bright future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy, for sharing your feelings with us. And I would say that uh, Taiji Men teachings are really a blessing for all those who follow them, like you, Dizzy, uh, the benefit that it brought uh, into your life. For, for others, uh, the moral values uh, of uh, Taiji Men have left to very deep transformation of their personality, uh, as it is the case with the next uh, Dizzy, who will now take the floor and that I will introduce. It's uh, Robin Liang, a uh, firefighter. Uh, thank you, Willie. Uh, hello, everyone. It's an honor to have the opportunity to respond to the International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of victims. Uh, hello, I'm Robin and I'm a firefighter. I used to be a person of words but no action because of lacking self-confidence. I always felt that others should do better than I. I always felt also, so I let others do the job, but when expectations are not met, I will easily lose my temper. My Shifu, the head of Taiji Men, Dr. Hong, taught me how to be a better person and encouraged me to spread love by doing good deeds. I became more confident and reliable as I tried to take more responsibility without expecting anything in return. I still remember that in 2009, Typhoon Morocco hit Taiwan with torrential rain. Landslides wiped out the village of Shaolin tribe in Kaohsiung, and nearly 500 people were buried alive. After witnessing the disaster, I didn't want just to be an audience sitting in front of the TV watching people suffer. This is what my Shifu taught me, to listen to my conscience calling, which motivated me to become a firefighter. I put an awful lot of work to pass the exams and go through the rigorous training. And now I have the chance to participate the rescue and potentially save some lives. I was involved in a huge explosion caused by an underground propylene leak in downtown Kaohsiung in 2014, which killed 32 and injured 321. Roads were burst open and people, automobiles and everything else were blown away. The scene seems dreadful as if it was a battlefield. It made me realize that when a few people neglect their duties, it can lead to a disaster of great death and injury. But what is more terrible than this is the illegal abuse of power by a few officials, which causes suffering to the people because the prosecutor, the persecutor is the government and the people may run out of energy and still have no way to complain and are trapped in an abyss. Wu Pei Chun, a crime school teacher, fell to buy the school, but she was persecuted by the NTB with the ex-owner's tax bill for more than 20 years. The textbooks became entangled, resulting in depression, attempt suicide twice, and even the confiscation of her life-saving cancer found. Sometimes when I receive a suicide case, I often wonder if there is a desperate situation due to the tax collection. 
We can apply for bonuses because of our efforts in disaster relief and rescue cases. But it is inevitable that some people will overstay their work in order to receive additional bonuses. However, after participating in the tax reform, I found that tax officials might be billing arbitrarily, an executive officer may be overbidding in order to receive more incentive payments. I began to think about the legitimacy of incentive payments and their impact on our work ethic. I realized that the tax enforcement incentives are the source of tax injustice because greed is the root of all evils. How can a civil servant sitting on a debt and salary resist the temptation of additional bonuses? The public service is good at boosting morale with incentives, but it has become a source of greed and cruelty to the people. Only by abolishing the bonus system can civil servants be committed to their duties, implement the administration according to law and put an end to corruption. I once heard Willie pointed out in an international forum that the key to Tajiman case is the reward system, which not only creates conflicts of interest, but also leads to fabricated tax evasion cases. It's a pyramid scheme of abuse of power for personal gain with officials at all levels enriching themselves. The beneficiaries of this corruption system are the Ministry of Finance, the NTB and executive branch. However, the system of incentive payments is a product of martial law period. Legislator Chen Ying revealed in 2017 that the NTB's tax incentives have no legal basis but are budgeted for every year. The tax incentive was proposed by more than uh, 160 legislators, including Zhu Xingyu in 2003, and was abolished the next year. The NTB released its own administrative guideline to revive the bonus. Officials crave for legal bonuses and abuse the people by issuing tax bills. It's a horrific crime. The wrong tax bills come with no consequences. So it's no surprise that officials are reckless. My shift taught us to love the, our country, to love the world and love all beings. Despite being persecuted by the government, Tajiman still managed to travel to 101 countries self-financed, willing to spread the message of love and peace all around, and advocated for social justice at the same time. In 2016, I followed Shifu for the first time to Portugal to participate in the 52nd Goofy Hairs International Art Festival. We were the first Taiwanese cultural group to be invited. Taiwan has always been repressed internationally. So when I heard the national anthem at the opening ceremony, wait, sorry, at the ceremony, <clears throat> I was very moved and proud. Uh, we engaged in cultural exchanges with kind hearts crossing the boundary between languages and religions. I witnessed the power of love and culture when we were warmly welcomed and embraced. The next year, I took another opportunity to attend the 2017 Love and Peace World Leader Summit in New York. I gave a short speech on how good culture leads to good education and economy. On the cultural exchange night, I perform a piece of traditional opera areas. Leaders, ambassadors, and members of NGOs attend our meeting to share their efforts to help the world over the years, ring the peace bell, and declare their world wishes. 
which is quite important now, right? I remember President Mama of Kiribati, who rang the bell in 2016, said, ringing the bell is a message to the world about the importance and fundamental of love and peace. We cannot do it alone. It's a shared responsibility. And we did find a lot of like-minded friends with whom to collaborate, to create a conscious culture, to promote the idea of love and peace, and to give people the opportunity to look into their heart and inspire themselves to do what is good for the planet. So I appreciate everyone from around the world who has spoken up in support, human rights, and justice. The Taijiman case is never a tax issue, but a political purge and religious persecution. It highlights the unfairness of tech, uh, Taiwan tax system and the mutual protection of officials and officials. Mashifa told us to tell right from wrong, truth from false, and to be a practitioner, to identify and correct witnesses. So I stopped dreaming and started acting. I learned to write articles to inform more people about the truth. And I try to speak the truth out loud so our voices to be heard. We hope that some of our government leaders would eventually listen in to their conscience and have the courage to admit their mistakes and clear the name of Tai Chi Man. By solving the Tai Chi Man case, the tax system and bureaucracy in Taiwan would be improved so that the democracy, rule of law, and human rights can be truly implemented. And people will live and work in a peace and harmonious. I would like to share a song composed by myself about the unfair tax system in Taiwan due to bonus system. So here you go. So 我都听不过百岁 Patient in listening. Thank, thank you very much, and uh, for your marvelous voice with, with this song. Oh, it it really brings a, a joyful note uh, to <laughs> to this webinar. And thank you uh, very much to tell us how to show us and to tell us how Dr. Hong's teachings made of you a firefighter which was a way of realizing your dream to do good things, good deeds in your life. And your mission now on earth is certainly uh, to save human lives and everything that belongs to their personality, their belongings, their property, their families, and so on. Thank you very much for your uh, testimony. And uh, we will now uh, listen to the, the, the last uh, uh, Dizzy, uh, I think it will be on the video, uh, Mrs. Wang Yiwen, marketing specialist, building material company. It is an honor to be a part of this major United Nations Day, which aims to educate, promote the protection of human rights victims' rights, and honor those who have made significant contributions to the cause of human rights, including Bishop Oscar Romero. In Taiwan, the prominent human rights persecution case known as the Law Tat 228 Tai Ji Men case is a false case for, there is nothing in the first place where to make the dust. Tai Ji Men Higong Academy has never had a taxation problem since its inception in 1966. 
According to Chen Zilung, a former law professor at Taiwan University, this case stemmed from the political purge and religious sweep in 1996. At the time, the Kaohsiung and Hsinchu district prosecutors' offices received false accusations and they both checked the case and signed the agreement but prosecutor Hu Kwon Jen broke the law and abused his power investigating and prosecuting illegally without factual evidence in everything from criminal cases to tax cases. In August, 2021, the media reported on an interview with the late tax collector Xi Yuxing, confirming that Hu Kwon Jen was in charge of Tai Ji Men case, fabricating witnesses and evidence, collaborating with the Bureau of Investigation and the Taxation Bureau to persecute human rights with public power, and framing Tai Ji Men for over 25 years. Even in 2020, the National Taxation Bureau and the Administrative Enforcement Agency illegally auctioned off and nationalized Tai Ji Men's reserved land for self-cultivation, according to Huang Kuanguang, a former senior auditor of the Kaohsiung National Taxation Bureau in Tai Ji Men case on December 19, 1996, two passbooks totaling $610,000 were searched. The following day, the newspaper reported that Tai Ji Men Shifu had fraudulent income and cram school income totaling $3.1 million, which is 5,000 times 610,000. Is the NTB still required if Tai Ji Men case can be collected in this manner? It is sufficient to find a few such prosecutors. Taxing and punishing people with fictitious ones is a blatant violation of tax law. Tai Ji Men case is indeed illegal taxation, however, because the prosecutors have not discovered the money flow and there is no evidence they are unable to prosecute. This is simply a perverted law. Tai Ji Men case is not a domestic or tax case, says Italian religious expert Dr. Massimo Intravine, but a case of human rights persecution on freedom of religion, especially when corruption occurs in people with power which is the worst kind of corruption. Hu Quanjen's personal mistake brought disaster to the entire country, one person's mistake harmed the entire world. The NTB continues to disregard the Supreme Court's third instance judgment in this illegal and false case and has overstepped the presidential palace and five yuans, depriving them of the rights they are expected to exercise in accordance with their responsibilities, harming the country and persecuting human rights. As I mentioned at the International Women's Day Forum on March 8, those I am most grateful for in my life are my Shifu and Shimu, they were subjected to state violence during those years, but my Shifu and the DZ are of one mind. We have walked bravely and steadfastly through these 25 years of cold winter, committed to promoting tax and legal reform, as well as a global culture of love, peace, and conscience. Today, in this important forum, I'd like to reintroduce the video of the day for you. Please join us in watching it. Thank you all.今天是三月八日国际妇女节面对成千上万因太极门案件而惊慌失措的弟子他仍旧温暖坚毅勇敢无惧这位女性她是我的师母太极门掌门人夫人有女士我的师母是一位家庭主妇她平常就是把我们弟子当作孩子一样的照顾
，暗夜流泪，彻夜难眠。他原本开刀后还没有痊愈的伤口，在看守所拥挤潮湿的环境，因为没有办法收到很好的照顾，伤口溃烂，一直到一个月后的某一天。一名女警发现，才赶紧处理她的伤口。当时师父师母因为突然被遭呃，同时被羁押禁见，平常都是师母按月去寄生活费给孩子，但因为突然发生变故，孩子在国外也不知道为何父母会平白受压，国内也没有人知道可以如何联系他们，所以在生活费中断的情况下，他们只能向同学朋友借钱。三餐以泡面来果腹。师母是三个孩子的母亲，她也是我们古传气功武术修行门派里面所有弟子的师母。她的小家庭、大家庭同时遭受这么大的危难，可以想到师母的心情有多的多么的焦急跟煎熬。可是检察官侯宽仁在没有市政的情况下一再的严压，一直直到羁押期限四个月届满，他才提起公诉。侯宽仁的滥权起诉，造成师父师母在法院裁定交保之后，还被限制出境长达七百五十一天。身为一位母亲，她却无法去探望她远在他乡的孩子，这是最不人道的折磨。所以，《国际人权两公约》把国际呃把家庭团聚、把家庭团聚权明文列入人权的保障范围，因为。被剥夺了亲情团聚的伤害，绝对不是国家愿意赔偿所能弥补的。更可恶的是，四个月侦查期快到的时候，侯宽仁他找不到任何的证据，他居然就找来国税局的税务员史月生来做为证。他无指太极门是补习班，涉嫌逃漏税，他捏造了三十二亿无中生有的数字。他一面称这是诈欺犯罪所得，要求法院来没收。又说这是补习班学费者跟营业收入，移送国税局课税重罚。国税局他们没有为，他们没有依照他的职权去调查，他们就直接依照这个不法的起诉书开出违法税单。那这个不法的税单后续又衍生不当的限制出境，剥夺了我师父跟师母的出入境自由。他其实严重了侵害我师父的宗教传道、文化推广以及人生迁徙等自由。他更是侵害我们太极门师徒文化参与权，导致师父师母他们再次无法再探望在海外求学的孩子，他们的亲情亲情团聚全被剥夺了。侯宽仁无中生有的刑案跟税案，导致我师父师母被限制出境，师父长达总计两千两百三十三天，师母总计七百八十二天。我的师父，我的师母，他们遭受这么多的磨难。可是师母她依然很勇敢，非常的坚强。超过半个世纪以来，她带领我们弟子走过三千场国内外的文化交流，她也协助师父带领我们在弘扬太太极门的文化到全世界。她甚至也接待了各呃国内外的重要的贵宾。她不曾说累，可是，在弟子的眼中，我们看到的永远是她温柔、勇敢无惧的笑容。师父一心坚定弘扬度人，这个是一个伟大又宏呃宏大又艰辛的志业。可是师母她总是平淡而坚定地跟我们说：“师父去哪里，我就去哪里。”为了让我们众多的弟子可以安心的修行，在台湾、在美国有陆续成立道馆，为了将爱与良心的志业、爱与和平的理念推展到全世界，我们走访了全球一百零一个国家。这些点点滴滴都深印在我们弟子的心中。其实，在太极门案件，最高法院曾经在两千零七年就已经判决太极门无罪无欠税。那国税局的违法税单，财政部的诉愿委员会也连续五次都判太极门赢，要求国税局要调查。但是，一直到两千零二年，国税局第一次调查净失礼的性质，他们是抽样寄出函查表。当时总共有两百零六位师兄姐接受调查，那我也是其中被调查的一位。我们所有人都表示进师礼是赠与，可是当时的台北国税局局长张胜和、中区国税局局长许瑜哲却纵容他的下属隐匿证据，甚至伪造文书，他们自己制作函询清单。
台北国税局宣称只有九名表示是赠与，中区国税局表示说只有五名是赠与，甚至到了两千零九年。台北国税局局长林中原在回复监察院的调查时，他又自制函群新单，表示两百零六人没有一人说是赠与。那为了确认我自己的赠与意识是否被篡改，其实我有多次前往国税局，我也多次的函询国税局是否能申请阅卷，但他们都以我们不是当事人为理由给拒绝。我不懂，我自己写的函查表为什么我不是当事人？这种荒谬的理由他们都说得出口。你可以看得到税务机关对人权的轻视跟傲慢，而且以法院的判决即可撤销的这种自始错误虚假的税单，它却要我们人民不断在行政救济制度之中，还有陈情中耗虚耗我们的光阴。我还记得在两千一呃二零一零年六月十七日，立法院财政委员会跨党派有十四位的立委。有召开一个保护保护租税人权、终结万年不死税单的公听会，当天我也有在现场。那一天，我们搬了许多的赠与书、证函查表，所有过去调查的资料，我们连影本都带到现场，满满的好几大箱。可是，在这个会议过程，这些违法滥权的税官都是一脸漠然、事不关己的态度。当我们弟子代表师兄在台上声嘶力竭发言的时候，台下的官员居然是闭目养神，或是打起瞌睡。我永远难以忘记那讽刺的一幕。这就是我们国家说依法行政、爱心半税的税务官员。那天会议上，当时的财政部次长张盛和跟中区国税局副局长萧树村，他们当场承诺要撤回。一九九二年，也就是民国八十一年度的综所税的强制执行，并且他们要在两个月内解决太监们的税务冤案。后续财政部在七月二十二号，其实已经有发函给田秋瑾等三位立委，他们表示已经指示中区国税局依税捐基征法第四十条要撤回执行。可是这些流氓官员却背信讳诺。我记得当年的国庆日，我没有受邀参与国庆压轴展演。我们当年是以文武兴国、富强康乐、黄金百年、超越巅峰为主题。当时我们要庆祝国家即将迎接百年的祝福，可是我们是利用自己的周末假日在练习彩排的时候，到了当年八月二十七号那一天，国家他们又同时要违法拍卖查封我们的道馆。当时距离国庆的展演只剩下一个月又十三天。我们一方面背负着道馆即将要被封馆的痛苦，一方面又谨记师傅引导我们，你要用心、用功、用人、用耳。为了要庆祝国家生日的练习，我们每天、每次在中正纪念馆的馆长、广场彩排预演的时候，其实都有来自各界的贵宾来为我们伸冤。我还记得。当时，中华人权协会副理事长苏有成律师有鼓励我们，要团结在一起，绝对不要向邪恶低头，绝不妥协，要为人权奋斗到底。我记得每次在彩排的烈日跟汗水的洗礼之下，我很清楚的知道。<笑>我们太极们没有对不起国家<笑>，是国家<笑>对不起太极们<笑>。然后在二零二零年的八月二十一号这一天<笑>，国税局跟执行署他们又违反正当法律程序，罔顾法律<笑>，违法拍卖我们太极们的修齐道场预定地<笑>。即使我们蒙受不白的冤屈，我的师父跟师母还是胸怀慈悲的大爱，他还是带我们，告诉我们要为国为民，他继续带我们走遍全球五大洲，弘扬爱与和平，推动两性时代运动，还是继续关怀社会的公益与人权，我们自身经历人权迫害的磨难。可是，师傅还是教我们要怀抱济世助人的心，去帮助更多受到同样法罪迫害的受害者。尤其是我想到我的师母
，他当他自己的爱和无私的奉献给全世界，他的温柔跟建议永远带给我们弟子满满的鼓励。所以，我告诉我自己，我愿意效法师父师母的精神，利用自己的假日时间，我去参与法税改革的活动跟接宣。我希望透过我们自身的案例，可以唤起更多的国人来重视法税改革的这个急迫性。今年台湾宗教自由无任所大使暨台玉山神学院的院长布新大力，他也曾经说，最高法院都已经判决我们无罪无欠税了。那司法单位或是财务的单位都应该要以最高法院的判决为依据才可以啊。他所以，所以他也鼓励我们不可以软弱与放弃。他告诉我们要继续的争取。不少的朋友或是宗教自由的国家都会成为我们的后盾。他也呼吁这是最后一道防线，大家要一起努力，帮助台湾政府站在正向的力量与正义的力力量。所以今天我要向小英这呃小英总统来呼吁，要推动转型正义，呃，要让每个人民都可以安心的生活。那就请你要立即平反太极门的假案，归还太极门被违法拍卖的土地。唯有政府落实依法行政，尊重人权，真正除错与改革，人民才可以活在不受恐惧与匮乏的安定的社会之中。我们台湾才能真正迈向民主法治的自由国家。谢谢大家。I will, I will pass the torch back to uh, Massimo in a few seconds. Uh, he will announce uh, the next speaker for the conclusions. After that, uh, there will be uh, a video again. And after that, I will have the pleasure to uh, present you a short um, excerpt from an opera by one of our dizzies that we have just listened to. Massimo. Thank you, Willy. And uh, Marco Respint is not, not with us, but we have a video with uh, his uh, concluding uh, remarks. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Taijuman case is a serious case. So far, scholars, activists, journalists, and testimonials have been involved in a long series of webinars whose aim is to inform the general public on a situation unfortunately too little known and to contribute to redress too many misdeeds addressing directly to the Taiwanese government. Today's webinar is the latest in this important series, but it is quite relevant. It's titled Simply and Direct, Summing the Whole Case Up demonstrates it well, seeking the truth about the Tajiman case. Basically, there is nothing more to say than what the title openly says. We are, we all are, seeking the truth about the Tajiman case. Tajiman movement itself is seeking the truth about the case that ruined so many lives of its members. I am then deeply thankful to Human Rights Without Frontiers, presided by Willy Fabre, and to the Centers for Studies and New Religions, directed by Professor Massimo Antovinian, for organizing this important series of webinars and for calling me today to draw some conclusions at the end of another relevant event so brilliantly animated by our distinguished panelists and always welcome testimonials. Let me tell you that I am particularly honored to be personally involved in this webinar as the director in charge of Bitter Winter. Bitter Winter magazine denounces violation of religious liberty worldwide and has taken the Taiju Maze to heart. Bitter Winter exists to promote freedom and justice for persecuted religious groups, but there is a special reason why Bitter Winter is so active on the Taijiman case. We said it repeatedly during past webinars. 
yet it is so important that I want to repeat it again today. The Tai Chi Man case is a case that shakes all souls. The Tai Chi Man case doesn't regard just a spiritual group in Taiwan. This case begins, of course, in Taiwan. It begins with the Tai Chi Man movement, but it grew and steadily grows to regard and concern everyone. The Tai Chi Man case is, in fact, is a a case of justice denied, as well as a case of justice delayed, which are almost the same thing. B, a case of staggering religious freedom violation. C, a case of, a case of blatant human rights abuse. Let me briefly consider these three points. The first point, justice, is quite simple. The accusation against Taiji men have been proven false by many courts of law. There is nothing bad with Taiji men. There is no tax evasion. There is no fraud. There is nothing. Officially in the Taiwanese Justice Department knows it. Officially in the Taiwanese Fiscal Department knows it. Officially in the Taiwanese government knows it. Nonetheless, the consequences of these false accusations do persist and the Taiji Man movement, its Shifu and Dizi suffer a sentence without having committed the crime. For all those Taiwanese officials that keep on persecuting Taiji Man, well, Taiji Man is simply guilty, guilty of innocence. After the acquittals by tribunals, Taiji Man has not been let alone to live in peace. The persecution continues, and Taiji Men has been persecuted with no rest for 25 years, a quarter of a century. It is a case of justice denied in itself, plus a case of that specific form of justice denied that is justice delayed. In one word, no democracy, no civilization can be of a gross and grave injustice such as this. My second point is the religious freedom violation in the case of Taiji men, as well as my third is human rights abuse against Taiji men, Shifu and Diz. I wish to consider them as intimately linked. Even more than that, I am considering the first as a specific case of the latter. That is to say, violation of religious liberty as the most important human right abuse. In fact, human rights are not what international meetings, political majorities and government commission decide for the simple reason that what international meetings, political majorities and government, government commissions decide come and go is bestowed on people today just to be turned down tomorrow. These are no rights, these are grants. To be rights, they should be undeniable unalienable, untouchable. They must be inherent to the human being. They must proceed from human nature. So for the very reason of being a human being, distinguishable from any other living being and, and non-living object, a human being is entitled to certain intangible and sacrosanct and even taboo rights that no fellow human being, no group, no organization, no political or economic force, no state and no church can curtail and challenge, repudiate or beat him. Chief and first among the rights that the human being is entitled to by his or her very nature is religious freedom, for the simple reason that all human beings have the right to know truth and the nature of truth focused upon by religions, faiths, creeds, and beliefs is supreme. In recognizing the existence of God, a highest being, or a spiritual entity, or in any it, resides the ultimate and total sense of one's life. For this reason, religious freedom is the first liberty of man, and the right to its exercise is the fundamental human rights from which all subsequent rights, expressions, association, education, ownership, etc., derive. But if it is so 
foundational for all human acti activity, since it is centered on the most seminal question of all, religious liberty has serious consequences. Believing or not believing in God, following or not following a spiritual way, has a tremendous impact on human behavior. It essentially influences the way in which people live, associate with others, animate society, do education, politics, economics, in one word, all human activity. In fact, religious liberty is not only the freedom to worship, but also to live according to one's beliefs. Religious freedom is not only a private business, it is a public right, a political liberty. Thus, as religious freedom is the first human liberty, the right to religious liberty is the first political human right. Now, religious liberty is not relativism. Religions are not all the same. This is truly the negation of authentic religious liberty. In fact, if one cannot choose, since soul is the same, one does not enjoy real liberty. But there is an important element of equality in religious liberty, and that is the genuine religious sentiment of believers, no matter how they call God a highest being or a spiritual entity. It is not only the conviction of your servant that truly religious liberty is the freedom of, of the human being to seek truth. And this directly connects us to our topic today in the United Nations International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of the victims. The topic being, as you all perfectly know, seeking the truth about the Taijiman case. So saying seeking the truth about the Taijiman case means speaking the same language of religious liberty as the freedom of human being to seek truth. In this way, while we seek truth for Taiji men, we exercise our religious liberty. Indeed, seeking the truth about the Taiji men case is religious liberty in itself. If in fact we establish truth on the Taiji men case and respect it, we do honor religious liberty at its. And since I defined religious freedom as the first human liberty, as well as the right to religious liberty as the first political human right, seeking the truth about the Taiji men case means defending human rights for every human being, for humanity and for a humane society. No matter why, we keep on repeating that no one on earth is excluded from the Taiji men case ever. Thank you. Sì, in Corso Re Umberto 56, per Corso Francia 25, viaggia in Trovigne una persona. Massimo, se hai il video, c'è. Thank you. I should, as you may have seen, for a phone call, join another event. And so I'll pass the mic to Willy Fotre and say goodbye and thank you to all the participants. Thank you for a beautiful webinar and Willy will guide you to the final videos. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Very much. And uh, yes, as it was announced, so we have a, a final uh, video. Shifu and Dizi have visited 101 countries spreading love and peace. And afterwards, uh, an opera singer for a short uh, video. <laughs> Please start with the first video, Shifu and Dizi. <laughs> 